Good morning, VotingBanner.com fans. Captain Larry here with Chapter 48. Here we go. Come on board. Okay, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, this is a new project for us. This is off a 94, 1994 Mastercraft Star 205, I believe is the model. This is, of course, the captain's chair. I've worked on a bunch of pieces that I'm not showing just because they were cushions and side panels. I'll show you the whole product uh, to get it finished when I'm done, just so you'll wrap this chapter up. But the uh, key on this one is it was left outside for a couple years uncovered, so it's got a lot of damage on it. So I'll be showing you both uh, this captain's chair and I have a big sofa back seat that's very a very big project and uh, we'll get into that right after here but I just wanted to show you quickly the front here I've got it all marked up as I've described in the past which is a good a good uh, idea to do uh, you'll see this will be nice we've got a nice French French seam on both sides we have piping which is nice as you can see here we have a damaged foam which you're going to have to put a little plug in so I got everything marked. Uh, we'll, oops, we'll have inside corners here, but uh, these aren't bad because they're stapled right to the side, and this is plastic. So even though we, it was outside all this time, uh, obviously that stayed in very good shape. So everything, the first thing, like we always do, we want to mark everything up because it's pretty rough shape. You can see another nice thing here is they have French, a French seam in the back. Now this is better because it, again this will be an outside corner so we'll be able to pull the vinyl onto the uh, onto the foam and we should be able to get this pretty much wrinkle free I would think we'd be able to do that this is just the other side skip the bottom, the bottom so this should be a relatively quick project I hope uh, we'll see if we run into trouble so let me uh, let me to get this thing disassembled and we'll bring it right back Okay, everybody, I, I was going to just skip this because I'm going to do the piping as my first step because I want to attach that to the proper panel. But uh, something that I have discovered that I would like just to pass on, it's a little different than what I had taught earlier. If I've had probably one problem besides wrinkles and straight seams is the uh, thread showing that I do the uh, piping with that ends up showing in the seam and if you're not real careful uh, the thread shows and it looks kind of tacky in my opinion so and I have a I have the foot there with the tunnel but I want to show you what I think you need to do that have solved my problems you got to be a little more careful go a little more slowly but I think it comes out nicer so normally, if I know if you can see this, the, the tunnel is right there under this foot, centered. Well, if you go through two tunnels, and say, and then when you're pulling your vinyl tight on your project, oftentimes the thread will show. So really what you want to do is we want to move the thread to the right, and then when we do the seam where we actually sew it onto the panel, then we can use the tunnel. So what I've done, been doing now, instead of an under, I don't know if you can see it, I'm putting it right on top, right on top of that. And like I say, you've got to go a little slower because obviously you're going to have a little harder time without that tunnel guiding you. But if you just use the, use the foot to stay right on top. Then we're going to move that stitch to the right, and then, like I say, when we do the finished product, we'll do it right on, put it right in the tunnel, and we'll be fine. Okay, everyone, well, to finish that piping thought, uh, what I've decided to do in the assembly of this product is I'm going to start in the back center and work forward. So I'll do the two back panels, and then I'll do the kind of the sides and then the uh, armrests. And I think that if I keep it centered, everything should be fine. <clears throat> so to get this right, what I do is initially I staple. So again, you want your edges of the piping out. 
I can do it pretty much freehand. Also, when you make your piping, make it a couple inches longer. Because when you start going, you'll find out when you go around these corners and stuff, all of a sudden it's gone. Sometimes you get to the end and you're, you know, two inches short or something. So make it two or three inches longer than you really need it. And we'll see if we can't. Now we're going to use that tunnel. Get right in the tunnel and hopefully that's going to cover up that, that seam. I think I can go freehand here. Unstable to start, but if I keep pushing the, uh, the edge of the piping, and again you're on the good side of the, the good side of the bottom. Okay, I will go around and bring you back. Hey, welcome back. Let's check. Always check your work. See, look at that. Looks very, very good. All the, all the seam is buried now. Everybody, uh, I freehanded this this side and then I turned around and flipped it over and did the other side. This time I stapled and you can see that. I found it a lot easier. This corner, these corners are very, very tough to keep the fabric laying flat. And uh, if you just kind of, you know, curl it in and then staple it, it uh, came out I thought a lot nicer. Make sure you remember to take those staples out. Now we've done a single stitch. And what I recommend, Sailrite has this product called Seam Stick 3 8 inch. And the problem is splaying these things, these two flaps open from your seam allowance and keeping them that way. Because then we need to put that fabric right on top of those. So they recommend you use this seam stick. And what you can do is you kind of pry these things open and the two-sided tape and then you as you're holding them open try to get it on each side of the seam like that it's just going to take your time it's very very time consuming I have a heck of a time splaying these things open I mean somehow to keep these things I rub it with a scissor edge yeah, it doesn't work that good. But anyway, we can get that. And don't don't pull the second side off the tape because there'll be big big mesh you'll have in your hand. So leave it covered, and then just work each side down, you know, all the way around. And uh, let me get that done, and I'll, I'll show you how to put the how to put the fabric. back. So we got the two sided tape on. And then now we've got to try to keep these down and put this fabric on. So you only want to pull a little bit of this tape off at the same time so that it doesn't stick to itself. And you can do it with two hands like, like this. I think it's probably the best. Make sure you get a nice spread on those seams everybody here we are we finished and we put the double sided tape first did not take it off the topping off until we were ready and then I just inched down pulling a little tape off putting this on a little tape off putting this on it's not easy matter of fact I would recommend these curves are really really tough uh, if you're going to do French and you don't have to do a, a curved one just stay away from that and just do a, a single seam uh, maybe a double but these French are hard enough to do when you're doing a straight line you got to do these curves it's a real bear but if you got to do them you got to do them and okay let's uh, sew the top bring it right back now of course on a French we're going to sew on both sides so we'll do the left side first remember now that we have this fabric taped down. We don't have to worry about playing with it. So the key will be is this foot here. I want to run that right in the seam on both sides. So that seam, that's going to be right on the seam, right on this edge. It will be right on the edge of the seam. So hopefully we'll get a nice straight, nice straight stitch here. Now 
it's good to go really slow. Pull apart real slow. Keep that foot right in that seam. Pulling apart, nice and slow, and that turn out nice, nice, even. You gotta just take your time and walk that foot right on top of that seam, and then you'll get a pretty nice finished product there. I think that looks great. So you see, you know, hit the, hit that uh, when you stick it on like that with that two-sided tape, seam stick they call it. It uh, really gives it some. Uh, the body. So I think these, this is the back now, as we remember. So now we will start in the center, which will be the headrest. As you can see, I marked the center of the headrest with the center of the back rest or the back. So remember, good to good. Flip it over and we'll staple this so we get a good clean start here. go around these corners so it's going to be a little tricky but let me sew this and I'll bring you right back. Uh, everybody, uh, I just wanted to show you kind of progress here and also just a couple of checks uh, that I want you to I suggest you do. Every time I sew a piece on, there's the armrest here, or the backing, whatever, the headrest portion, this portion here, is I always come back to the seat and put it back on. When you're working in, in captain's chairs or, the, or those type fishing chairs or anything like that, you have so many angles and you really need to make sure that your all your seams and your piping and your French and all that are going to fall where they're supposed to be. So uh, after you sew, you know, put it back on. When you start with something, you put it back on and just check everything just to make sure you know obviously you, know, you don't have it pulled to make sure you'll have enough here to staple and enough to staple under and that the piping is falling on the right on the edge the back the back's looking really good with that french oh by the way one other thing i haven't done the french goes on both sides here uh what i i didn't do and i suggest maybe you don't either is put the french in right now uh, what I do is just put a single seam down, actually I double stitch it to give it some extra support. But anyway, I just put the single down because the reason for that is when I put these things back on just to do a, a kind of a progress check, if you've already put this into a French seam, it's a mess to get apart and you're probably going to ruin all your vinyl and you're going to start all over again. By just putting a single on here, you can check the fit, make sure it's going to look all right. And then if there's a mistake, you just have to take a seam ripper, separate that seam, and make the ad necessary adjustment. Hopefully it's a real small adjustment. And then you do it. So I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to sew a single down here, just like this, with this here. And i got to sew here for this panel, inside panel. And uh, that's just a single, but this will be all French down here on this side. Again, I'm only going to do single right now, though, and then just check it. And once I got it checked, I'll bring you back and uh, I'll bring you back. Uh, I'm doing the French seam. Uh, <laughs> they're a struggle. They really, really are. Um, I want to show you. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't figured out how exactly how to do it yet. Uh, what I did this time, rather than putting the, the seam stick double-sided tape on both sides, what I did on this one here, I just did it on one side, and that held it fine when I was sewing. So I think the easiest way to do this, if you're going to use this double-sided tape, is I just simply bend one side down, and then I walk, I walk the tape, kind of one inch at a time, 
down the down the seam. And uh, then when we get we get our fabric here, again you gotta at least we're not fighting with two two of these. Things. I just pull it apart like that. Start pulling the protective coating off. Now we obviously should just have one sticky side. Try to center, try to center our fabric right there. And then just keep walking down. I, I wanted to show you this part. Uh, the French seam is regular. I mean, we've gone over it several times. You can check the earlier chapters if you like. But uh, you remember on this, we have to sew from the top side, the good side. And we had this headrest here. And so unfortunately, you've got to kind of squish everything in there. You've got really three things to worry about. Number one, get everything under there, number one, so that you can get on your seam. You've got to turn it over to make sure that your fabric is splayed out so that we'll sew on the edges of each when we're going down there. And the biggest thing of all is make sure you check under here and that you don't have any roll over material from some other place. You really got to be careful with that. So always check. Make sure you're only sewing the fabric that you're trying to and not catching something back here, which you really got to be careful. and. What I do, because we have to remember, we have to hold our threads. Being there's so much material, I just pull them out and hold them like that just to get started. And then we off we go. So that's really all that we'll get started here. But uh, I just wanted to show you and mention that. And it's just got to go really, really slow, a couple of inches at a time. Make sure your, your splay is good and your fabric is out. You're pulling your seams apart here. And you go walk right down them and you keep your foot right on that seam line. And then once uh, we get it done, here's our double, uh, I mean our French seam. Came out pretty nice, I think. Like I say, I can't warn you enough, please. When you're sewing in these holes like that, so this came out very simply, of course, because we only put two panels together. This one here is a combination of like four. And if you're not careful, you'll end up sewing into the back. So you really got to keep putting your hand under there, make sure your seam is laying flat and your fabric is, is covering the seam. And there's nothing else under there that you don't want sewn because it can happen. This happened to me, unfortunately. Didn't happen today. Now, the only thing, this I think it's turning out really nice, doing the rough fit here. Uh, I think that, that French is going to look real nice. We'll get a little steam on that and pull it. Um, the only thing that concerns me is I don't know if I measured wrong because obviously we're not on yet. And uh, But we want the French to be right on the edge here. We want the piping right on the edge outside. And if that's the case, you can see my, my these are just tack down strips here. And they're short. And here they're fine. Because we'll be able to tack them on the back, no problem. But here in the front, they say I don't have this on perfectly yet. But you see, I'm a good, I need a good two more inches on here. Now this is a good time to look at this. That's why I say keep putting it back on, make sure you're happy with everything. Uh, just for be just to be safe, what I am going to do is I am going to sew on another strip on both sides, maybe another couple of inches or two or three inches. I can always cut it off and you won't see that because this is where the cushion goes and the backrest goes in here. So these won't be seen even with these seams. Not that it would be, I guess, that important. But So I'm going to put uh, some additional vinyl down here. You see I stapled what I did is one staple here. We need a center. So I stapled under here, so you got some wrinkle there to work with. And then I work down, work down the side. And I've got this pretty good shape. And I think we can finish doing that when we pull the outside. Being obviously this is what's going to be seen much more than the bottom of the outside. This is where we want to start. So I 
tacked here, and I came down there and I tacked both of these under here so that we have the shape we want. And then I just pull in, try to get this as smooth as I can. Well, obviously, I need some seam here. I'll show you how let's do this side together. Using our, <coughs> our seams as our guide. I use three eighths staples on this. I usually use half. I find in these hard plastic, they don't. Half inch does not work well. There we go. It's not bad, huh? Line pretty straight. Try to get right up to the edge. See, we've got the inside all done now, and here and in the bottom. We look pretty good. We have a few wrinkles here, a couple wrinkles there. Now we have not been wrinkled here, of course, but we haven't done any of the outside pulling yet. So hopefully, when we pull and attach to the bottom, these are all going to go away. If not, then we're going to have to steam them. We'll probably have to steam anyway. Here, so I think this is going to go. See. <coughs> What you want to do, I think, is once you get a kind of rough tack like this, you just pull it. And you see, when you pull it, and then the wrinkles go away, then you've got obviously got some hope for doing a good job here. Remember, you try to keep the lines right. So I think we'll be okay. So let's uh, let me uh, start. I'll start on this side. And so I say, way to do this, again, I use 3 8 inch crowned stainless staples. They go into this plastic better. Started here, centered everything, started here, and worked my way down here, worked my way down there. And then I use the bottom, this little staple on the bottom, and I pull, actually pull everything down and staple it. So that our lines are pretty straight. Got a few wrinkles I got to still work on with the steamer. Of course, remember, uh, vinyl, by definition, wants to lay straight. And this is, you're putting into a new form here. So anytime you've got an uh, angle, like that big angle, it's going to want to flatten out. So it will do it almost automatically. But I got to keep steaming that a little bit more. I ended up with one wrinkle here. You see that? goes right away with a little bit of pressure. So I need to steam and massage that one out. Got some mud on there from the steam. That came out beautiful, huh? Real nice French seam there, everything laying pretty smooth. Again, this is an outside curve, so by definition it's gonna come do a nice job. These came out pretty good. Anyway, there we go. Unfortunately, I don't have the inserts. Uh, the owner has those. He had them done somewhere else. But uh, there's a captain's chair for you. They're a struggle. Uh, so, you know, I definitely would not recommend this <laughs> as a first project. But uh, see, our lines are real nice. We've got our French right on the edges. And we've got the piping on the edges on the outside. But I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Okay.